We got a slew of disappointing data this morning. Jobless claims coming in higher than expected last week. Industrial production contracted further in October. And home builder sentiment hit its lowest level so far this year. And while Fed Governor Lisa Cook says a soft landing scenario is possible as multiple factors work to curb inflation, investors aren't so sure as both yields and equities are under pressure today. Let's get another view from the Fed now. Joining us in an exclusive interview is Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester with our very own Steve Leesman. Steve? Hey, Kelly. Yes, welcome from the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. We're actually inside it, and we are with the president of the Cleveland Federal Reserve Bank, Loretta Mester. Thanks for joining us, Loretta. Thanks for being here in our bank. It's been a number of years we've been doing this, and I'm always excited to come out here to Cleveland, which is a beautiful city on a beautiful day, by the way. Um, maybe not so beautiful on the data, but before I get to the data that Kelly talked about, which didn't look that great, let's go back just a couple days Okay. to the CPI data. How yes. did you react to that? Well, it was another good data print. I mean, I was uh, pleased with how it came in. It's, you know, continuing sort of the view that we're making progress on inflation, discernible progress. We need to see more of that continuing um, to be able to assess, you know, that whether inflation is still going to progress as we hope it will. Um, but it was a positive report. Was it an all-clear report? Did it tell you that inflation has been vanquished and it's all going to be I, I okay? No, I wouldn't interpret it that way at all. I think it's, we're going to have to see much more evidence that inflation is on that timely path back to 2%. But, you know, we do have really good evidence that it has made progress, and now it's just, is it continuing? So you didn't take it that way. Did you watch how the market took it? Did you notice that the idea of any future rate hikes was priced out of at least the futures market? and that all of a sudden they brought ahead the probability of rate cuts into the spring? Well, the market's going to react to data. They're reading the data prints the way we are. But, of course, I think our job is really to take the panoply of data out there. We're not going to re react to one data uh, release. We're going to look at all the data that's come, come in. And given where inflation was, we're going to need to be really convinced that inflation is on that timely path back to 2%. And I certainly would need to see more of continued progress the way we've seen to be convinced that we're on that path. Do you think it was right for the market to take future rate hikes off the table? Well, the market's going to do what the market does. Sure. Who am I to say whether the markets are right or wrong? They're assessing data. I'm assessing data. We're all going to be coming together at our FOMC to discuss what we're seeing, and then we'll make a plan for what we think the next uh, So you're not going to say if the market's right or wrong here? I'm not going to say whether the market's right or wrong Okay. Here. Can you talk to me about how you are looking at the impact of interest rates on uh, Fed policy? They were at 5 percent, which people came out and said that's something that's doing the Fed's work for it. Is that still true at 4.5 percent yeah. on the 10-year? So you're talking about the long, yeah, the, the long bond, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you ever see those kind of, of, of measures, part of what the Fed does, right, is our monetary policy affects financial conditions overall, right? So we're looking at all of the parts of financial conditions, including you know, what's going on in equity markets, what's happening in the bond market, what's happening in the, the value of the dollar. So, of course, we're going to look at um, those movements in those kind of financial conditions. Um, I think the rise in the 10-year has a number of sources, right? Some of mm -hmm. it was because they were also, the bond market participants were also reassessing the strong economic data that came in, just the way the Fed did as we went through the summer and then in uh, the, the fall, beginning of the fall. So part of it was that, but part of it also was the term premium. And in that sense, right, we would, if that were sustainable, that's going to have a dampening effect on the economy. So it would be part of the broader financial conditions that we'd be looking at in order to determine and calibrate our policy appropriately given our dual mandate goals that we're trying to achieve. So I'll ask, I guess, the question more directly is a four and a half percent long bond, along with what's happened with the stock market, is that a welcome, unwelcome, or neutral change in financial conditions? Well, it's a change in financial conditions, what we expected to happen when we were raising our Fed funds rate, our right. policy rate. That's what we are anticipating will happen, is that we'll get a tightening of financial conditions. That'll go through the economy, you know, transmit, and that'll be what gets inflation Back on so that at path down levels to levels of the market here, you still see them as helping the Fed in terms of doing its jobs. Well, I think it's a, an appropriate way. It's, it's indicative that the transmission mechanism is working. 